You guys just did a fantastic presentation. I was really amazed at the amount of detail you guys went through. So um, why don't you guys start by telling us who you are and what brought you here and what you were just doing here. Awesome. Thanks, Mark. Uh, my name is Melissa Lavangie Ingersoll. I am from Massachusetts and I am here at Equip Expo with Alex and a lot of my co-presenters uh, and in cooperation with Davey and Women's Tree Climbing Workshop and we're here to literally provide education about uh, the tree industry, about climbing, about tools of the trade, about tricks, about different methodology about how we actually ascend and move around in trees. Awesome. I'm Alex Julius with the Davy Tree Expert Company. I'm super excited to be here talking to another industry where we're sister industries where people are wanting to get from working on the ground and working aloft and be able to give people the right start. That's what I'm excited about is people who haven't had this foundational information so they know that they're safe up in the trees. I love that. Um, we always preach safety obviously. It's so important in our industry. We don't just talk about it. It's got to be ingrained in us and I think these events are fantastic for that, for raising awareness. And one thing I got from you guys, uh, your, your last presentation was um, you made it very easy for people to go step by step in a chronological order, so to speak, as if they wanted to get into tree care, which a lot of these people are probably here doing, because not, we're not really always speaking to arborists at a show like this, but maybe they're wanna be. So um, recap for me, like the first thing you would tell people and I think I know where you're going to go with this, but first thing you would tell someone when you're speaking to that audience of people who want to be in the business but maybe aren't in the business yet, where would you steer them first? Mm, that's a good one. Um, for me personally, I'm just going to take my own example. I was not in this industry whatsoever, and I had a background in forestry and with a fair amount of actual landscaping background as well. Mm -hmm. And so when I was interested in tree care and actual professional caring for trees, I recognized the opportunity where other people began to mentor me and say, you're interested in trees, you understand that you have an affinity for them, let us tell you about the safety component first and really give you a broad sense about how you need to keep yourself safe before you explore that. Uh, I think mentorship is a great place to start with other professionals who understand the, the dangers, the safety, the excitement, the professionalism of it. And then once you keep going with that, you get into, again, developing your professional uh, credentials, if you will, um, and all by way of mentorship. That's, that's I find, is an excellent yeah. way to get involved. I agree. Yeah. Alex? took the words right out of my mouth. I wish I could have said it that well. But in addition to mentorship with the climbing itself, mentorship with, as we were just speaking about, the gear itself, I think it's really important to find someone who's not just trying to sell you gear, uh, but someone who wants the gear that's right for you and knows your limitations, not trying to sell you past your abilities. So finding that mentor, someone who is accountable for their product and who will sell you the right thing to make you safe while you're climbing trees. I love it. Uh, great, great messages as always. Um, next to you have a manual sitting there next to you, right? You, you referenced it a few times. How important is it to make sure people who want to do tree care understand what that's about, how it was invented, and why it's in place, and how important it should be that we all know and follow it? I mean, to me, that's a huge thing. Alex, what do you think? So this is our industry safety standard, the Z133. It's a voluntary standard written by arborists for arborists, and I think it's really important for all of us to just know what it is, comply with it. It hurts all of us when somebody gets injured or unfortunately passes away from tree care, and it benefits everybody to have this information. There's no harm in sharing it. We should all know what it is, comply with it, so we all go home safely. We all have the same goal. We want. We want to go home safely, we want the trees to be cared for, so the more we can spread the word of the content that's in here, the better we all are. And Alex, may I add to that for one second? Uh, one of the things that I really appreciate about our industry and about this standard is that it's actually designed and built by people who are in the industry and looking out for one another and really focused on um, the safety of the day-to-day -day actions and reflecting upon injuries that are harming our industry and the people that care for our trees. So consistently, regularly, a, a team of 30 plus people come together between the main committee and subcommittees to support our industry with a consensus with them all 
representing all different facets. So whether it's residential tree care, whether it's utility tree care, whether it's u universities, uh, companies that sell equipment, uh, across the board we have representation to keep ourselves safe as an industry and it's constantly being breath, uh, life breath into it on a regular basis to make sure that it's accurate for the time and the appropriate time. Love it. Yeah, and I think you guys know this too, but I grew up in the industry doing tree care with a family business. We didn't know about that early on because it was a long time ago, um, but my father obviously believes in this very much as well as he's been on the ANSI Z133 committee for a long time and still continues to, uh, to support it. Um, but I think that is something that is crucial to bring to the table to a company. If you're not doing tree care yet and you want to learn tree care, you start there. now. Um, another thing I heard you guys talk about, um, making sure you hammer home, is the idea of PPE. And I guess uh, for me, I would ask, like again speaking to someone who's new to the business or hasn't been in the business, what are the most important things you have to know about and when do you have to use those? pieces of equipment. Yeah, that's good. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Either one of you. Yeah, I think this is a, a mutual, I, uh, the wonderful thing about I love talking not only to you, Mark, and to, to, to Alex and the other people that we're working on stage with here, is that when you get to a certain level of professionalism, uh, you want to ensure that you're also leading with professionalism. And when mm -hmm. we demonstrate to the general public of the trees that we're caring for, typically, again, with utility, residential, what have you, we also want to put our best foot forward. So it's not its not only about uh, keeping our personal so, so, personal selves safe, but it's also showing to the industry, to the general public, our customers, that we believe in our own safety and that we want to ensure that they see us as professionals, as tree doctors, by doning ourselves with our PPE, our helmets, our eye protection, appropriate leg protection if we're wearing saws, um, and, and so forth and so forth because it's ensuring it's to them and to ourselves that we're protecting ourselves. Did I miss anything? Do you want anything to add? Yeah. <laughs> Great. Uh, and, and I agree with that. And for me, the weird part about it too is that I don't like do stuff in my own yard without PPE on now. I can't do it. And I, and I jokingly say that it's so ingrained in me that yeah. when I play hockey, I can't not wear eye protection, you know, where some people won't. And I'm just like, to me, I see the risk and it's, there's no reward. So uh, I think that's huge too. And, and you even mentioned it uh, briefly too about the idea of professionalism. I think as soon as you don't wear your PPE, you look less professional, yes. even to the general public. Agreed. They now know what to look for as arborists. So um, you mentioned different pieces of equipment and I love that you guys talked about the need for a choice and why. So why don't you um, just kind of elaborate on the idea of why there's choices and what's important about using the right tool for the right task. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Alex because yeah. I could talk about this to the cows come over <laughs> and then I'll fill in any gaps. Alex? Sure. Great. Yeah. I mean, we have, we have tools for climbing, for rigging, for cutting, and all of it is going to depend on ourselves, what works for our body. It's also going to depend on the work that we're actually doing. So it's important to have those choices, to have that arsenal in your toolbox so you can pick. But sometimes, I mean, job always goes the way you planned, right? Nothing ever changes once you're on site. Just kidding. Yeah, things change, and so you need to be able to adapt. So having those choices allows us to adapt and pick accordingly. So if we only had one saw on us, then that's gonna that's gonna be we're gonna be cutting corners, right? So we don't want to have to cut corners. So having those exactly. options makes the job safer for us. We can uh, reevaluate our plan and work accordingly to that instead of cutting those corners. And if I can add to one of yep. because of <laughs> course, we again, we're, total, we we're total, did. total geeks about this. It's, yeah. And again, not only the tools of the trade, making sure you have the right thing. But I think one of the neatest parts about our industry is we're always making sure that we're staying up with the trends and staying mm. up with people who are innovative and understanding that there are always better ways to do it. And even mm. though we've, we used to do something the same way all the time, isn't necessarily the best way, even though it still can be done that way. Um, so there are awesome innovations always being and brought in, uh, just like the battery sauce. Yes. You know, so there's constant innovations that are making us work be work better and safer. That's perfect. And I think um, for me, um, one question that comes to my mind that, that you you could share some 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 pointers here um, is the idea of if you're speaking to especially a young woman out there doesn't have to be young, but somebody who's sitting on the background saying, ah, I'd like to try it, but I'm not quite sure. 
Um, what would you say to them if they're watching right now about what, you, how would you point them in the right direction? Would you say tree care is their way to go? And how, how would you do that if you agree with that? Awesome. Um, may I take this one? Sure. And I'll hand it back off to you. <laughs> I just had one word or here we one go. phrase. You belong here. Oh, that's, that's awesome. That's really nice. That's brilliant. Not only yeah. do, do you belong here, I think the, one of the major things about that is just believe in yourself. If there's an interest Perfect. and you want to do something, just do it. Mm. Don't let anything get in your way. Mm. Whether, it's, uh, whether it's financial obstacles, whether it's physicality, allow yourself to do it. I'm going to share a story. Uh, I, I, I firmly believe in stories and I think we all learn from them. I had a young woman come up to us who is a certified arborist, has very many credentials under her belt. And she was supervising, she is supervising crews in the utility industry yep. and came to us and said, we really want to learn, I really want to learn how to climb trees to understand what the people that I supervise go through on a day-to-day -day basis and really want to recognize uh, what they do and came to us to learn how to climb trees. And in two years' time, she went from a person that was uh, physically aware and became physically fit. And what I mean by that is she understood the commitment to her body and to her teammates to understand that if she wanted to talk the talk and walk the walk, that she wanted to understand the skills and didn't let anything get in her way. And with hunger, with the right mentorship, with the right support, companies supporting your development, you can do anything you set your mind to. Perfect. Very well said. Uh, I appreciate you guys for what you're doing here, what you're doing for the industry, and thanks for talking to us today. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thanks.